In this video we're going to look at an example of how to problem solve with a cylinder and we're finding volume. <clears throat> so we can see a shape here and we're going to assume we've never seen anything like this before. So this is the shape. We have to find the volume of this shape. Now I've given you some clues, okay, that is to do with a cylinder so you can see the title there. Sometimes in a problem we don't have as many clues as this. So this is sort of like an entry level problem. So they make it more difficult th than this. So our problem solving steps, the first one we'd like to do is to predict what sort of maths might be involved in this, what rules might it relate to, what how might it link. Well, if we look at it, we look at the shape, and of course we've had a clue of the word cylinder there, we can see that we have, if we continued that shape right around, if we continued the circular cross section around, we could have a full cylinder there. So we sort of have a fraction, some fraction of a cylinder's volume. So it gives us a bit of an idea of what we might experience in the question. Next step is to clarify. Well, there aren't any tricky words or any jargon or terminology there, so we don't need to look any of that up. The information, well, we've got some measurements and numbers there, some units. We are given, given an angle. Okay with an angle of 120 degrees. We have a height. You can see the height. 25 meters. You can see another measurement, 20. That looks like the width, but if we have a closer look, it, due to the shape, we would call that a radius, that 20. So we can see a 20 along here, which is the same as a 20 up there. That's, if you imagine that circle as we spoke before, that would be the radius. So we have a radius. I'll fix that up. Of 20 meters. Now we're going to find the fraction of a circle. So the circle is a cross section, so we know that, like prisms, the cylinder has a, uh, a volume of cross sectional area times height. The cross sectional area is going to be a fraction of a circle times height. So it's going to be a fraction of pi r squared something times pi r squared times h. Alright, well we might recall that now that we're starting to solve it, we've clarified what we're going to do, we need to find a formula. Well, let's look at the A part. So we're kind of, we're kind of still looking at clarify here, but we're just about to solve it. For this circular shape, well it's part of a circle, isn't it? We call it a sector. We're just looking at that top surface, the cross-sectional area, that sector. The area of a sector, it's a fraction of a circle, isn't it? So we would go from our previous work, the angle divided by 360, which gives us the fraction, times pi r squared. So that's, that's our expression for A. So we can write that down underneath. So we have theta the angle given over 360, because that's the degrees in a full circle, times pi times r squared, and because it's volume, times the height h. Now that we have the rules written down, we can look at substituting in. So we have 120 degrees is the given angle over 360 degrees, times pi 
times the radius. Now the radius, remember, was just up here. It was 20, and the height was 25. So times 20 squared times the height 25. If we, if we think about it a bit, 120 over 360 is one third. So we've got one third times pi times 20 squared times 25. So one third is one divided by three times pi times 20 squared which is 400 or you can just put in 20 squared times 25 and I get 10,472 so 10,472 10,472 cubic meters let's see if that seems reasonable we can do a bit of an estimation to see if the answer is reasonable which means it sounds like it could be right it, it's in the ballpark as it were so if we had a full circle we would have um, pi which is about 3 times r squared which is about well it's exactly 400 times 25 so we should have something around that size. We have a third of we have a third of that, but don't we? All right, 120 over 360 is a third. So if you think about it, a third times three, third times three is one. So we just really have 400 times 25. Four times 25 is 100. So we have 100 times 100. So our answer should be a little bit bigger than 10,000. And look, it is. So it gives us an idea of what's reasonable. And we have solved the problem. Time for you to do some mastery.